Oh, what the? Oh, actually, that's right. Yeah, I can't swear. And please don't swear in the comments because they either won't be there or they won't be there for long. So please don't swear in the comments. You can, you know, tell us how you feel just without the swear words, please. Have a look at this. We've got a here. Uh, we've got one here for a vehicle inspection. It's a 2009 Hilux or Vigo, depends what country you're in. Um, June 2009, 1KD FTV. We're doing an inspection. It's done just over 300,000 Ks, and we're going to show you some of the usual things and what is going on here. So whoever's worked on this, all right. So if you've purchased one or you're looking to purchase one, this is small things that can be fixed. Not a big deal, but. It's just a telltale sign that's been worked on, and I haven't said what it is yet, but most of the regular viewers know what I'm talking about. So you can see the bottom clamp on the turbocharger, right in the middle of the picture, that rubber duct, the bottom clamp, it's pretty well where it should be, and see the top one, it's on a big angle, kind of like this camera, you know, like a big angle, kind of like, you know, it's a bit sideways. Right, so it's not actually, the clamp's not sitting in the right spot, it's not actually clamping that hose. So we'll just go a little bit further. Most people know what I'm talking about. I'm going to sit this light somewhere. There we go. There's a little ridge around about there. And see the clamp sitting above it at this side. But this one, it's sort of right up on top of it. Or the ridge is about there. And the clamp's down there. So totally bodgy workmanship. Okay. The usual. Someone's worked on it. So let's get in there. We can get that light happening. All right. See the oil? Probably crack the valve cover. Have a good look there. You might see a crack, you might not. It's very oily. Right, so I'm not sure. But we've seen other stuff like that as well. So let's get around this side. More evidence. Oh, what's going on here? Look at this. Who put these clamps back on? I mean, that is just ridiculous, right? Totally ridiculous. Trying to do something different here. See the plate? So you've got one plate at the back, then rubber, then rubber, then a plate at this side. They're two clamps sold separately. If they're missing on your vehicle, um, you get them from your local Toyota dealer. I think those ones are about 10 or 15 bucks each side. Okay, then you've got the studs. If the studs are missing, that go through into the manifold and you've got the nuts. So it depends what missing. Some vehicles, there's nothing there. Some vehicles, the back's there. Some vehicles, the front's there. This, in this case, it's all there. It just hasn't been fitted properly. Basically, all you need to do to fix that up, I believe, is loosen the nuts, slide that alloy plate upwards. Doesn't matter if the alloys come away from the rubber, so there's no, no issue there. Just loosen off the nuts, and what we'll do, we'll go ahead and do that because it's pretty straightforward. We'll fix both those clamps up here, but look, we had a look at the feedback values on the diagnostic tool. I'm not gonna show you because, you know, it gets too boring, but on this one, all the readings, it's done over 300,000 Ks, but all the readings are very much like it's got new injectors or near new injectors. So what do we do? Do we go everything should be right, mate, and leave it alone? Or or what do we do? What I think we should do is like we would recommend on any vehicle, besides checking the oil pickup, if you're not aware of that, when you do oil changes, you check the oil pickup, make sure it's not blocked. That's your free insurance. There's uh, other information in other videos. Check the injector information playlist. Okay. And uh, you'll understand that a bit better. But what I would recommend is the injectors come out. It needs a good, it's pretty clean, but it needs a really good clean up first. Injectors have got to come out to prevent contamination. It needs to be really super clean. Um, and then we check the dates on the injectors uh, because look, we just don't necessarily trust the workmanship. Once again, what we've seen already, if they can't even put a clamp on straight, okay, you've got to think this through people. If they can't even put a clamp on straight at this side, and we haven't even got the cover off, we haven't even got the plastic cover off, we haven't even got the intercooler off, we're not very deep at all, and we've seen that, and again, middle of the picture, that clamp, right? I could probably find more bit of oil on the valve cover, so it may need a bit of RTV, it might be cracked, it could be, we don't know, so we get it apart. It's not a big deal, though, it's not a big leak, it's more of a weep, so if you don't have any money, you could just leave it and go, well, I'll leave it for now, we'll see what happens, whatever. But if, you want to, if you've want if you purchased your vehicle, you've invested a bit of money and you want to make sure it's right, the way to do it right is to get the injectors out. You know, you can save money and do it yourself. You can get in our VIP group. We've got full detail, step-by-step -step videos, removing and reinstalling injectors on a number of different vehicles, on the 1KDs, Prados, Hiluxes, more Prados and more Hiluxes. Lots of different videos, lots of different perspectives and lots of different information. Get them out, clean it all up. You'll need some minimal parts if you're going to put them back in. 
but if we do the job or you send me photos of the injectors because you've you know paid your deposit for your injector you know for your injector kit or for your uh, bfe kit this one he's got a bfe kit so he may be in the vip are you in the vip group yep he's in the vip group so he can watch all the injector videos if he wants to save money he can do it himself or if he's like some of the other people, they go like, you know, this is something I'm going to do once every seven, eight, nine, ten years. I just want someone that's done it hundreds or thousands of times before to do it right. So whatever the choice is yours, the education's there for free. The information's here for free. We're just trying to help you look after it to avoid the usual problems, you know, the block door pickup. When's that about to happen? If they couldn't do that work right, did they clean the ports right? Have the injectors even been out? We don't know. Are they original? If they're original, certainly want to change them. It's rare that the readings would be that good, but we've seen all that before, right? You guys have seen that with us before where we've gone, oh, yeah, all the readings are good. They must have replaced them. Let's do the reseat and put them back in. We pull it apart. We find the original dates. And even though the injectors are good readings, you know, most clients will say, you know what, let's just replace them anyway. And we recently did that for someone. And, of course, then somebody else was able to get a, a free set of injectors. So this could be another free set of injectors. If this client decides to replace them, depending on what's found when they come out on the manufacture dates, certainly the readings are good. And if you've got no money or an old Hilux, an old late 06, 07, 08, and you've got no money and your readings are off their heads like the injectors are really bad, it's running badly, this could end up being a free set of injectors for you. Who knows? Depending what we find when we get them out. But if you don't want to miss it, subscribe, turn the bell on, and of course that'll come out in a video. Um, I'm going to have a bit more of a look around. If there's anything exciting like this, we'll, uh, we'll let you know and we'll put it up and have a quick look underneath and probably there'll be nothing to see here. All right, underneath the vehicle, we found a few interesting things. So uh, good you stuck around if you did. Okay, firstly, just be careful now. For these Hilux vehicle inspections, it's almost getting to the point I'm going to say don't bother bringing your Hilux for a vehicle inspection uh, because there's nothing to see here. Yeah, as surprising it is, maybe they are as tough as what they tell us in those ads on TV. But look, what the owner's done, it's a good idea if you bring it in for inspection. If you do take the bash plates off, we can see more. Okay, so you don't have to. I'm just making a suggestion. If you take it off, we can see more. So since they're off, we're going to have a look around a bit more and talk about a couple of things. So he's given a bit of a wash as well. And what I've noticed is, see the packing up. Let me get some focus in the middle of the picture. All right. See how it all looks a bit like the dog's been chewing on it? Okay, that's the pressure washer sort of cutting into it, I believe, right? I could be wrong. So it's good to give it a clean up, but getting that close can cause a couple of issues. It can push dirt and debris that are outside the engine here, up behind the crank pulley towards the ceiling. It could cause an oil leak, and these never leak oil. I don't think I've ever seen at the front of the crankshaft an oil leak from one of these engines, so you don't need to change that seal. We do keep them in stock, but uh, we've never had to change one, so... Um, that being said, actually, I think I've got someone that reminds me. There's a reason why these thoughts come up. Someone that has got one leaking. <laughs> but we'll have to check it out, and I'll have to get back to him. Okay, so the other thing is, what you've got to remember is, when you text me, you've got to text me at the right times, because if you text me at the wrong time, then uh, that's when you get lost, and that's where that just... You text me, I don't know if it was a weekend or after hours, whatever... Um, and then I don't see those texts, you know, there's so many when we come to time to check. Anyway, moving on. Um, so yeah, a little bit of damage to that foam and be careful pushing dirt towards seals. Now the older radio, so this is an O, what do we say? This is an O9, so it's about 13 years old. Good that this foam along here is not damaged because quite often they are. Not that it matters, but it helps block the air from going through that gap to force it to go through the radiator. Believe it or not, the air needs to go through the radiator and the condenser is what's in front here. So this one in front, that's the condenser. The radiator is this one behind, right? Radiators for your engine cooling system and your heater and all that. Condensers for your air conditioning system. That's where what cools the gas down. The air goes through there to cool it all down so your aircon can work. Pressure washer up there a little bit, maybe sort of bent some of those fins over. Okay, it's only the bottom section, not a big deal, nothing to worry about. It looks worse than it is, but just be careful because you want your fins to look like that, not kind of like that, if you know what I mean. So it's just, it's really going to make little difference, so don't worry about that. Yeah, same at the bottom, radiator 13 years old, they start to get deteriorated. I'm not saying to replace it at this stage. But it's something that you need to be mindful of and keep an eye on the radiator condition, the material sort of thing. From the outside, it's the external elements that are going to cause some corrosion and um, deteriorate from the outside, not the inside because of Toyota's awesome coolant, okay? 
So that's one thing we noticed. Now looking up here, even though we've got the cover off, you can see, to me, it's all clean, bone dry, no oil leaks, happy days. Typical 1KD at 300,000 kilometres, over 300,000 Ks. Let's have a, there's got to be some oil somewhere. What about that plug on the side? Look, this one hasn't even got the plug on the side of the block. So they don't all have it. There you go. Now, I haven't really taken notice, but maybe the, the Hilux blocks are the ones that don't have the plug. So I've got to take more notice. Hey, Johnny, have you noticed, some, is it the Hiluxes that don't have the plug or some? So no Hilux has got the plug. I've never really taken that much notice. I just, when there's oil, I look and I go, oh yeah, the plug. So the Hiluxes don't have the plug. There you go, I just figured something out. What are you, a proto Hilux specialist? <laughs> I think you're dreaming, mate. Anyway, there's the turbo. It's got a little bit of oil on the bottom of it. As I said, it's, how do we say this? It's common. It's not that common. It might be one in 10 or one in 15 or one in 20 vehicles, but it's that common that that many of them have got a bit of oil on the outside. It can be two things. It can be, it's not sealed at the intercooler properly. Remember that clamp earlier in the video we showed you? Perhaps there's from the, we're not going to go into too much detail, from the crankcase ventilation, the blow-by, that oil mist going through there, you get a small amount of oil. It could be leaking straight down, causing that mess. So refitting that could solve the problem. But even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can give this a bit of a wash, a clean up if you like. Keep an eye on it. You'll find it's not even dripping and it'll probably take a year to get that wet again, maybe even longer. So it's not something to worry about, but just monitor the situation because it could become a situation. Okay, transmission, nice, clean and dry. It's got a little bit of an oil sweat just here at this corner. I think that looks like the original cylinder. It's probably never been off the four-speed auto. What we did notice though, actually, better than me, Johnny's better than me, he noticed, check this out, right? You've got your sensor there and the bolt's missing. It's just not there. It doesn't look like it's ever been there, to be honest, because the head, there's no mark. You guys have a good look at that, right? I'll get in there for you. Right. I think they put that together at factory and they never put the bolt in there. Now, it's got me thinking, to, like that I didn't ever notice that there's no plug on the Hiluxes particularly. Um, maybe they've, there's a lot of these missing bolts. Maybe they don't have a bolt. This is just crazy. Um, we're going to put a bolt in there, but we've got another Hilux here. I think it's got a four-speed auto. Hey, Johnny, can you have a quick look under that one and see if the bolt's missing from that sensor, if it's got a bolt in it? And um, because, yeah, you know, it's got, it's got a bolt there. So this one's definitely missing the bolt because it just made me think, well, maybe they don't have a bolt. You know, these things that I don't know about. Because normally when we inspect a vehicle, I don't know, that's kind of not the place I'm looking for to notice there's not a bolt there. So good spotting, mate. Good work. You get a bonus slab of Heineken's today for that going above and beyond. Okay, so a bit of paddock work, got a bit of grass in there, that's all right. So there's nothing to see under here. We're just gonna have a quick look at, it's got, there's a really important bit at the end actually to do with these tires, but um, we've got the standard suspension here, probably sitting a bit low, I think, but the bump stops have been taken. It's got some airbags in there, so they're out of action at the moment. It's actually even got a rear diff lock and someone's nicked the compressor out of there. Whatever the story is, we don't know because he's only had the vehicle for about a year. So it was slowly, first time it's been here, but he's working on it to slowly bring it back from the dead because, you know, that's what, look at all this. They just put the wires in and, you know, for me, I've got to make this neat and tidy and some more zip ties and all this sort of thing. And the way those cut, the airlines are pulled like that at full extension, that they need a little bit more room up there. So there's some little things like that that need to be sorted out, but it's not a big deal. Um... All right, guys, what have I forgotten? Is there anything else? That's about it, just the tyres. We're going to tell them about the tyres for those people that hang around. It's quite funny, you know. We talk about the KO2 tyres and the reasons we like them for reliability. We're going to talk about this suspension as well. We like them for reliability in the outback, you know, puncture-proof and grip on the tracks. That's why we like them. We don't like them because they're best for on-road, blacktop use for people that go to the shops and back school and back work and back and lucky if they get on a trip once a year. If that's you, do not buy these tyres. But when you see the reviews and you see people like myself, I'm quite happy with them. Um, and, you know, 95% of all the other owners that think they're fine. But we all agree that, you know, they are a compromise compared to a road tyre. That's obvious. But where people go, oh, you know, they're a death trap and they're dangerous and you're just scratching your head going, how can you have 95% of people um, thinking, you know, these tyres are fine. And then you've got that small percentage that absolutely hate them. And I've talked about it in other videos saying the condition of the tyre, so the wheel alignment, the tyre pressure, 
the way it's been driven around roundabouts, tearing the tire up, and perhaps the suspension not working right, and this happens to have some pedders in there, pedders, whatever, we're not picking on pedders yet, we don't know how old this is, we don't know if it's working right, we haven't bounced it or anything like that, but let's just say I've never had pedders in my four-wheel drive, and I won't be planning to, is all I'm going to say there. But if you look at these tyres, whether it's the suspension or the wheel on it, they're on the inside edge here, you might not be able to see it in the video, but they're quite feathered. They're worn off on an angle, right? So you got that all the way across the tire, particularly worse on that inside and outside edge. You see on the outside edge here, this is just about gone. It's down to about, I don't know, about lucky if it's one or two mil. In the middle here, we got still five mil. And it's every second lump, which is often to do with suspension. So the point is, that is not a flat tyre. So you've already got a compromised tyre to start off with where you've got this amount of tread making contact with all these gaps in between, which is great for off-road grip, but it's not great for on-road traction, but it works fine as long as you're not asking for too much of the tyre, asking too much of the tyre is what I meant to say. But when it's worn like this, when you're driving along, okay, you know, let's use the torch here. Can you see like it's, that's how much grip you've got. The tyre is sitting on the edge the edges as it goes around so you've compromised the percentage of grip contact you got the road right the percentage of contact any of this rubber's got with the road is massively compromised so if you took there's 100 percent of your tire okay so if the outside blocks are worn like that and you're only making contact on the edge right and the edge i reckon you've just compromised you've lost about 40 percent of your tire completely like 40 percent of that tire has got 3% use. Do you know what I mean? Mathematics here. The middle bit doesn't look too bad. So it's probably compromised 20%. So overall your tire, I'm not doing the maths on this, but it sounds like it's got about half the grip that it normally would if it was in good flat condition, which is why it's really important when you're crapping on about tires, whether they're any good or not, that you make sure that your wheel alignment's been right. And then you've got the people that say they wear out quickly. Well, if you've got the wrong tire pressures, the wrong wheel alignment and the wrong suspension, then this is what you're going to end up with and it's going to drive not so good and the tyre's going to wear not so good and butter bing we've got other videos showing you 10,000 k's with virtually no wear on these tyres from a Prado that's uh, never had a wheel alignment is the best way because then you know it's right but uh, anyway that's enough crapping on about tyres but I just wanted to demonstrate this is probably why this sort of thing that we see quite often with lots of different tyres is why people don't like KO2s perhaps anyway I think that's about all we see up under here. Uh, Hiluxes are pretty awesome. There's not a lot to see underneath them. If we're looking under the Prado, more often, look, this has got a little bit of that sweat on the boot, but the Hiluxes generally quite often don't have that where the Prados do. But this one, this one does, but it's done 300k, but no big deal. Uh, but quite often the Hiluxes don't have that. Quite often the Hiluxes don't have the play in the front wheel bearings or the inner rack ends, okay, where the Prados often do. Obviously, they don't have the rear upper trailing arms there to be worn. So the Hilux is actually a bit more solid and less maintenance required. Anyway, guys, that's the video. Hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe, turn the bell on, catch on the next one. See ya.